We got out of the car when we drove it on the track for the first time, and every single one of us was like, I hate this car. They look better with Carbon Arrow. They do look better with Carbon Arrow. It's hysteresis, it's resonance. What's the other one? It depends. Kingpin inclination angle. Okay, uh, kingpin inclination <coughs> angle is like on the strut car, it's a line, when you're looking at the front of the car, mm -hmm. it's a line from the top of the strut bearing through the ball joint to the ground. Okay. Uh, in a control arm car, it's a line between the two ball joints to the ground. Okay. So it's not related to camber, but it's actually the- uh, Kind of the axis that things the axis rotate. That when you steer. Yeah, yeah. And its main purpose is to give self-steer effect. Okay. Because the uh, spindle will go in the upside down smile path when mm -hmm. you look at it from the side. Okay. So straight ahead is uh, the top of the unsmiley face. Yep. Yep. And then when you turn, it's here or here. Okay. Depending if you're going right or left. Yep. Yep. So when you let go of the wheel, the car it wants to rise to go, the or go down or yeah go down to the apex of the mm -hmm. yep. here. So it gives you self steer. Okay. Uh, the bad thing about it is it causes, um, you know, the, the tires to tilt outwards a positive camera as you turn. Okay. Uh, but you counteract that with caster. Sure. So, you know, like how when we're designing the secret project that yep. I was saying, you know, we want to have kind of square numbers in that. So, right. uh, the, the camber, well, I mean, the caster will cancel out the, the kingpin the angle. Kingpin angle. All right. Yeah. So. It's part of the steering geometry and, um, and affects steering feel. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like a 911 has a whole bunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't even know how that works because it has a. And that's probably one of the reasons why it has a whole bunch of caster. Sure. But it has a shitload of uh, kingpin angle, and you know I was wondering if the uh, Porsche makes it so. Um, a car with a very light front end still stays stable, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And so that was it doesn't my, take much force to center it up because there's not as much weight pushing down on the tires for, for a driving yeah. force. So in an air-cooled car, mm -hmm. pre-964, mm -hmm. the whole strut assembly is slightly tilted back on the top. So a little bit of caster, kingpin angle, but it's fairly vertical. Pretty, pretty vertical. Oh, okay. So okay. it's got kind of nothing in there. So you got oh, interesting. So you just let go of the wheel and it just keep turning. Yeah, they don't really. They don't center. self center. They're definitely when somebody gives the expression of "Oh, I like these old cars because they're alive and they feel all of this." It's because oh, we gotta. You gotta actually steer it back yeah, to go straight. They don't, and it's not the good type of car doesn't want to return to sender. It's yeah. like the car wants to go this way, and then you say, "Oh shit, it's going more." So then you lift, and then you get lift off oversteer. Yeah. And then you just kind of slide the whole car to the left and you're like, oh, these cars are so raw. They're like, so playful. I attribute raw, <laughs> somebody says the car's raw to that. Not like, too shitty. It's like, poor lack honestly, of it was it was really frustrating. Uh, similar, but different. We'd read all the journalists' opinions of uh, the 4RS. So playful, so awesome, so this, so that. It's so raw. It's like driving an old 997, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, we got out of the car when we drove it on the track for the first time. And every single one of us was like, I hate this car. Ted got out and he's like, I'm not driving it again until we do something. Because anything I try to do, yeah. the car just wants to step out. Yeah, I, and it was, it was nice. Set, step out. And comfy and decent. Trail brake, step out. On the street. On throttle, step out. He's like, okay, fuck this car. I'm done with this. Yeah, it so. wasn't. It's a good six tenths car, the way it comes from Porsche. If you try and push it past that, yeah. it tries to kill you. And we've had a number of customers call us and be like, you know what, you're exactly right. I'm very happy that you guys said that. Please send me parts because I don't, I like this car. I don't want it to kill me anymore. So it's good for cars and coffee. It's a very beautiful car for cars and coffee and it makes really cool noises. They look better with Carbon Arrow. They do look better with Carbon Arrow. <laughs> I think so. Uh, we didn't talk about Ackerman. Ackerman. So I know it's uh, also related to uh, kingpin angle, caster, and steering the car. So Ackerman... The suspension engineer, is, eight um, things are basic. You know, like when you turn the car, the inside 
tire goes to the sharp ah, yes. in the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the um, inside tire has to turn more yep. than the outside. And so you don't have scrub and fight. Right, right. So that's why, um, you know, your, your uh, steering on your knuckle, your steering arm angle, you draw a line from the outer tie rod through your ball joint and extend it all the way to the back of the car. Okay. So if you have perfect after Ackerman geometry, those lines will intersect in the middle of the axle. The middle of the rear, rear axle? Yeah, mm -hmm. so you have perfect uh, horse and wagon kind of Ackerman. Yep, yep. Um, so it won't like cook, 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 skip as you're going yeah. around the corner. So like my RS6 does not have perfect Ackerman. I because every time I'm backing it up or moving it forward, it's like tit, 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 especially on really tight, tight turning radius. I think like a, a, a like a 911, uh, the strut type ones do that in the polished concrete surface. Yeah, yep, for sure. Um, but you know, believe it or not, Ackerman was designed for horse and buggies. Interesting, because when they had dirt roads, they yep. had just regular steering. Sure, and they would rut the dirt roads. Sure, because they're, they're kind skipping. of just skipping and digging them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they invented Ackerman so the dirt roads wouldn't get messed up, and also to make less rolling resistance around a turn for the horses. Okay. Um, but generally, um, this is kind of my theory. Mm -hmm. um, it, some smart guys don't believe me, and I don't know. But <laughs> you've proven a lot of smart guys wrong. I, I always designed in the geometry like our special project. I put the mm -hmm. Ackerman point about six feet behind the rear bumper. Okay. So, um, you know, it's not quite as drastic, I guess. Right, right, right. And right. that's because of the, you know, that pneumatic uh, distortion of the tire. The tire, like, sure. You're going to get more work out of the tire. Yeah. Than, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you know, like Colin Chapman actually goes even further and does anti-Ackerman. F1 cars are that way. Yeah. Oh, so the, interesting. To okay. E to equalize the slip angle between the two front wheels. Right. But every anti-Ackerman car I ever drove held like crap. But oh, wow. Yeah. F okay. F1 does it because of the added sidewall and then the tire deflection at insanely high G loads. Sure. Yeah. Every, sure, yeah. every F1 car is anti-Ackerman. Like you can see in the TV when they have the in-car camera. I go, right. oh, wow, look at that. There's a lot. Of or if you see them at high speed corners with the copter camera above, you can see it. If you slow Yeah, that down. would be wild. Yeah, where it's, it's not it's like, like this. this. It's like that. There's no, some, the outer tire turns there we go. in more. Outer, yeah. tires outer more tire turns yeah. in more. Yep. So it's almost like it's towed in and mm -hmm. steering, not yeah. kind of towed out and steering. So a lot of like Indy cars are like that. A lot of open wheel racers are so like that. More better for stability, I guess. And uh, high G loads. High G yeah, loads. high G loads. Okay. It equalizes the slip angle at high G loads. But slip angle is something we will talk about next time. I want to get a tire engineer on here because there's a whole lot of good stuff that we want to talk about. And slip angle manipulation is the whole basis of suspension tuning. Yep, because that's the first spring. And and also it, uh, by manipulating it, you could affect the balance of the car mm -hmm. um, by you know different spring rates, different bars, yep. different yeah, so kind of like where Mike and I were talking earlier uh, about how a Formula drift car will create forward thrust at very extreme angles. Slip angle is counterintuitive that the tire needs to be slipping to a certain extent to create traction against asphalt it can't just be rolling on top that's not the most traction you will have out of a tire yeah. Yeah. so um and there's a whole lot of things at play with that you know generating heat because it's a viscoelastic material you know etc 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 there's a whole lot of complex engineering type stuff that we can talk about but that's probably part two that's a part two that's a that's a tire engineer getting in here talking about inflation and tire temps and slip angle and all of these kinds of things that are important for our track day guys Ooh, and understand. camber thrust and camber thrust yeah and we could talk about how we ripped that up and threw it out the portion recommendation a hundred percent when developing the dundon ones absolutely we were like all of this needs to go away so that we can actually get more work out of the tire which allows mm -hmm. you to go fast maybe we could yeah. talk about the the escape statements as an engineer you can use so you won't get in trouble it depends no, what you, <laughs> so what you can say is it's because of hysteresis 
<laughs> Another one is the chemical engineer. That's how chemical plants blow up. Another one is, but the sensor was a mile away. It didn't pick it up yet. The whole fucking thing blew up. I don't know. Hysteresis. That's what they said in Chernobyl. Exactly. It's a, it's a resonance problem. Yeah, it's a resonance that's, problem. That's yep. another that's way. That's another to get good one. I was trying to. We hear that from our engine harmonics all the time with the K truck with the yeah. whole wobble. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the a, other one is it's it, hysteresis. It's resonance. What's the other one? It depends. So I mean, I've been able to get out of every situation. <laughs> Some combination with, with, of those three. Yeah. With all, it's the hysteresis of the resonance, and it depends. Yeah. It depends on the hysteresis of the resonance. Right. There, there you go. go. Even better. We and, can combine the three. And you can say any of those, and you're never lying. Correct. Because they are. A, they all play a part, even if it's milliseconds at a time. Yeah. Uh, with that, we're going to have uh, a spot of whiskey because it is almost five o'clock. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. See you later. See you later, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>